Hello all you baby bats and bad witches, it's Marilyn and for this video I'm going to be doing a tutorial and first impressions review for the Lily Munster Glam Goth 5 year anniversary makeup collection. I actually ended up getting the palette as well as all 5 of the lipsticks in the bundle. The look that I created for this, I used a lot of the eyeshadows in here so I'll make sure to also include swatches at the end of the ones that I didn't use and all of them in general. To me, makeup has no season, so this isn't like a winter makeup or fall look. Like, this is something that I would wear out. And of course, even though this is a very colorful look, I still had to do it in this like dead girl sunken eye shape that I love. I was really interested to try out this collection also because two of the lipsticks are a different kind of formula than the regular death proof, which it still is. I'm wearing both of them right now, but we can get more into that at the end. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm really excited to share all of my opinions on the products that I got. But before we get started, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Marilyn Mugby. And please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get into the look. So this is what the outside of the palette looks like. I love the design and artwork and all the use of the different colors. It matches exactly what the inside of the palette looks like. I think this is the best way to kind of make sense of all the colors and see that even though they are very bright, they do really go well together. On the back here, you can see that it is cruelty free and vegan and this palette retails for $40. And this is what the colors look like on the inside. There's 12 eyeshadows, 4 shimmers with varying finishes, and the rest are matte. So I'm going for this kind of dead girl eye shape with all the sunken placements using as many eyeshadows as possible. As a base for this colorful eye, I'll be using a creamy white pencil. To me, this is the best way to apply these kinds of eyeshadows. The main color that I'm going to be using is 60s Glam Con, and I've been in like a really teal, greeny, blue mood lately. I love these kinds of colors right now, so I was the most excited to try this one out. I found that in person it is a lot more blue, and you can see that I really had to build this up. I would describe this more as sort of a transition shade, and even though I was able to build it up on its own as you can see here, I left in the full clip to see like the amount of work that it took to take it there. It is possible. Once I place it all over the lid, I'm bringing it under the eye, and the next color that I'm using is called Marilyn. I'm gonna be placing this hot pink in the sockets of my eye, and I don't know if you can tell on this camera, my lights are a little overexposed in this video, sorry, but uh, it is a little deeper of a pink, and I don't have anything quite like it. It's not too warm, it's not like a bubblegum pink. I am, of course, placing it over areas that I didn't put any of that white base. So if you wanted it to come off a little more vibrant, definitely use a base. And you can see when I place it here in the crease over the blue, it mixes really well together. And I'm gonna start creating a transition for the purple. If you're into makeup at any capacity, you may know that purples are pretty hard to formulate. So I was very impressed when the next shade that I'm using called Lily was so easy and blendable on application. The pink that I placed down before actually did a lot of the work for me already, so I don't need too much of the purple, but from my experience with it, I would say that this is one of the better purple formulas that I've tried. Oh, and I also noticed that there is like no fallout on these eyeshadows. You can really tell with the way that they blend into each other, just how soft and seamless they go on. I'm also using that purple to smoke out the bottom lash line, and next I'm going to be using this bright blue called Eccentric on the inner corner. Since I noticed that the mattes blended really well together, I wanted to try and experiment a little bit with the different textures, so I'm using this color mainly as a base to mix in with the shimmers. I layered a little bit of the bride on top of this, and it did not come off as blinding as I hoped. So I'm dipping back in and putting Casket Ready on top of it. I think my lid needs some sparkle, so I'm going in with Horror Housewife and creating sort of a floating liner cut crease situation. Would you believe me if I said that I didn't wet my brush or add any primer or anything to this? It stuck onto my lid just flawlessly. Sometimes these really 
bright and like textured eyeshadows can be flaky and leave glitter all over your face but i'm telling you there's no fallout in this palette and to finish off this look i'm adding some highlight for my eye bags and the hollywood glam goth eyelashes to finish off the rest of the face i'm gonna be adding some more pinky purple accents so i threw on some hot pink pencil in the waterline and the shade marilyn as blush you can see just how large these pans are my whole face brush fits in here with no issues i'm placing this really high up on the cheeks to make my face angular and kind of spooky and finally for the lip combo i'm gonna be using a black pencil with lily munstar and bad luck charm these two colors are actually the ones that have the new formula so i'll be mixing this deep purple and berry shade to create a sort of gradient lip the recently updated teardrop sort of doe foot applicator on these lipsticks make it very precise to apply but in order to blend this out more properly i need to switch over to a lip brush or you can also blend it out with your hands i am feeling my 2014 tumblr girl ombre lip fantasy right now this would look so cool with just like some concealer or like a really nude lip in the middle but i want to enhance the pinks in the eye so i'm adding bad luck charm real quick and this is the completed look so for my thoughts on this collection i would say that i feel like this eyeshadow palette specifically fills in a lot of gaps in my collection that I needed, like a really nice blendable blue. This purple is great and although I know that purples are kind of hard to create, this one is very buildable without being sheer upon application if that makes sense. I find that a lot of these are also really pigmented but they're still really soft and blendable without having too much fallout. If that's something that bothers you, that's not something that happens with this palette, so I really like that about it. And what really shocked me was that I really enjoyed this shimmer. Um, it's not a shimmer. This one is the most glittery one, I would say. This one has like a really nice pearlescent sheen to it. This one is mostly like the one that has the chunky glitters in it. But I really wanted to talk about the pearl that this one Casket Ready has because I've never had a satin matte eyeshadow that is pigmented like how this one is. It looks like you put like a really beaming highlight. It's what I have on on my inner corner, but it's not the same type of texture as a highlighter. Usually when I use satin matte shades, they are very sheared out and this one is really pigmented. So, I mean, if I were to give any notes, I would really be interested to see this type of formula just because I find that it is really beautiful. And shades like these, I feel like have gone out of style, but I've never seen one done like this before, so I really like it. I know that it might seem kind of daunting just because there are so many pops of color, but I think if you just use this neutral and white and any one of the colors, you can really make it useful for every day. I love red eyeshadow, and I find that the one in here has almost a deeper brown tone to it, so it's very neutral and almost wearable for every day, I would say. It's not very bright compared to other ones that I have. This shade, 60s Glam Con, was the only one that would work, I would say, better like as a transitional shade. I have it placed all over my eye, so you can definitely get it there, but compared to the others, you would really need to use a white base under that. One of the things that really got my attention with this palette is the fact that it has pretty much every type of green that you would ever need. This bright green, I don't have anything like in my collection. And this kind of like khaki and army green kind of color is so gorgeous. And whenever I've bought green eyeshadows, like this is what I expected them to look like and they never have. So if you're missing out on some good green eyeshadows, that's such like a weird color. But I think especially on brown eyes, they look really pretty. This periwinkle one is such a dream. I've been like really obsessed with like blues and greens lately. And this is the perfect periwinkle shade. The shimmer is pretty much what you see in the pan. I don't know why. It, usually when you have shimmers nowadays, it'll be like really bright and sparkly with like a silver or even like an iridescent shift. And this one it's very like true to color so i love that about it since i'm obsessed with this color and for my go-to glam i always do like a sparkly shimmery black and then now i'll be able to do that look still 
with the neutral brown and the casket ready pearly shimmer but now pair it with any other color that I might be wearing. This is perfect whenever I do like my gothic makeup looks that I do this kind of smoky eye with. I usually do like red or purple, but now I have blue and green and this and pink and ugh. To me, this is a very good glam palette, as well as being supplemental to like all of my other random little palettes that may need a little bit more of a kick because these are very, very pigmented. This palette is very impressive and I love the attention to detail in all of the art. What really got me was the little kitty in like the back collar. I need one of these like for real. Glam goth cat merch. And the mirror, it's so beautiful. It's like a little haunted house mirror. I would have never thought of that. It's so beautiful. I'm really excited to play more with this. Now for the two lip colors that I have on, they are actually the new formula that Glam Goth is doing with some of their lipsticks, it seems. They're these in Bad Luck Charm and Lily Munster, and I do find that they take longer to dry, so you still just only need a thin amount, and definitely I would say a lip liner, but oh my goodness, the way that these feel on the lips are less drying. I know their normal death proof formula can be a bit much for some people. What I like about those is that you just swipe it on really quick. If I'm ever in a rush, I grab my Glam Goth lipsticks because I know they take two seconds to dry. These, on the other hand, even though they take a little bit longer, if you have dry lips, I would say that it's okay. I would take the extra time to wait because they feel so pillowy. I feel like they don't accentuate the lines on the lips. So even though I do love the original Death Proof formula, it feels pretty comfortable. And now let's go on to some swatches. So here are all 12 of the eyeshadows. I'm going to reflect it into the light so you can see the sheen on the four different shimmers. And let's get right into it. I'm going to be going in and swatching it row by row. Lily is a royal purple with a matte finish. The Bride is a periwinkle with a pearl finish. 60s Glam Con is a robin's egg blue with a matte finish. And Horror Housewife is a really glittery baby pink and I really like all four of these I can't choose a favorite so the one that I like the most I would say or the one I use the most is Horror Housewife definitely now the middle row is all of the bright matte shades Herman is the most perfect green eyeshadow Marilyn is a hot pink Vamp Princess is a warm toned red an eccentric is an electric bright blue. Out of these four, my favorite one is definitely eccentric. I've been looking for a really soft and blendable blue. This one is so good. And finally, the bottom row is going to be more of like the everyday color. So first is Wolfgang, which is a really deep brown with a matte finish. Glamour Ghoul is a matte black eyeshadow with silver glitter. Transylvania is a military green with a similar finish to 60s Glam Con, it is a matte but very soft. And lastly, my favorite eyeshadow out of this whole palette is Casket Ready. It is a really pigmented white eyeshadow with a satin matte finish. You can see how pigmented it is when I tilt my hand here. Even though it shines really bright in direct light, you can see how pigmented it is when I turn my hand to the side. For this first lip swatch, I'm going in with Lily Munstar. I was so excited for this color specifically. It looks like something that I used to wear when I was in high school. I would describe it as a blackened purple. And the way that I like to apply it, just so it doesn't take too long to dry, is I do these like little dabbing motions on the lips to layer on as much pigment as possible. I like to do this with my darker colors just to make sure that it all came out even and with these types of lipsticks that take a little longer to dry. I'm lazy and don't want to do a second layer, so I just get it all out of the way here. This shade includes a new formula that's going to be best suited for people with dry lips. It is a comfortable matte finish. These lipsticks seriously don't go anywhere and I don't know why I like feel the obligation like legally to <laughs> tell you how to take these off because I tried to take it off with a makeup remover wipe and it didn't work and even with some beauty oil nothing was happening so I'm just going to apply a thin layer of lip balm, let it sit for a little while or you can even work it into the lip color and wipe it off. If you need a long lasting lipstick this one is definitely it. 
This lipstick is called It's Alive and it's described as an unconventional yellow gold nude. I have seriously never seen a color like this. I personally wouldn't wear it on its own. I feel like it would work for a Donald Duck cosplay or something. But lately, this has been my go-to nude. Oh my goodness. So all you have to do is pair it with like your nipple color <laughs> lip liner. And I love wearing it just dabbed out in the middle of the lips. And if you have the Dark Renaissance palette, this nude lip combo looks so amazing with Florence as a blush. This is Frankie's Bride and it is a deep gray lipstick. If you know anything about me, you know that I love gray and I have a little collection of gray lipsticks going now, but I don't have anything like this shade. It is very hard to find a gray lipstick that has more earthy, brown, deeper tones. Usually grays go a little more blue, but this one has the original death proof formula. It's very pigmented and goes on in one swipe, and I seriously just can't get enough of this color. The next shade is Bad Luck Charm, and it's described as a deep fink, fink? <laughs> pink fuchsia. This one also features a new updated formula, and you can see it's very slippy on the lips when I apply it. Super plush, but I don't know why I felt so uncomfortable in this color. I don't usually wear this kind of shade. I don't think I would ever wear this on its own either. I think it's just that my lips were dying by this point in the video, but I wanted to show you how I would actually wear it, so I just paired it with some dark wine lip liner and a clear gloss. And finally, this last lip color is called Vampirella. It is described as a bright, warm-toned red. As always, I am a huge sucker for the original Death Proof formula, and this one is no exception. I don't think I've ever applied a red lipstick this perfect and also this fast. I'm not doing any editing to this. I'm going to leave in the full clip so you can see just how flawless this red lipstick is. The way I would describe the finish on these like original death proof lipsticks is almost like a suede and this color is very vibrant. I know my lights are a little overexposed here. I was like sitting too close to my lights, but I'm telling you, unless you have very dry lips, I really do recommend these glam goth beauty lipsticks. I can't just choose one lipstick that I like, so my top three are It's Alive, Lily Munstar, and Frankie's Bride. And finally, I'll leave you with some up-close hand swatches so you can get a better representation of the shades on these lipsticks as well as the two different finishes. Overall, I really love this entire bundle. The colors are so unique and they fill in my personal collection of colors that I've been looking for for a while now. Make sure to let me know which one of these is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching my Lily Munster Glam Goth Beauty makeup review. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel as well. For a closer look at all of my makeup looks using this palette and others, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Marilyn Mugby. I'll see you next time. Bye!